Hello and welcome to our Market Tracker Talking Points. Today we're talking about the quality of companies currently coming to the market and whether the Financial Conduct Authority is taking a tougher attitude towards companies who are seeking IPOs. I'm Jane Mayfield, a lawyer in the Lexis PSL corporate team and I'm joined by Dan Hershowitz, a corporate associate at Davis Polk. Hi Dan. Hi Jane. Hi. Um, we've noticed through our market tracker tra research that um, post admission, the share price of a number of companies has performed poorly. Uh, there have also been suggestions in the press that the quality of companies coming to the um, uh, market is quite poor and that several floats have recently been pulled. Um, do you see these as indications that there is an issue with the quality of companies coming to the market? It's a good question. I think fundamentally, no. Uh, and I think it's worth setting the context here for what's gone on in the last six okay. months. Um, we've had an incredibly busy first half on the capital markets. I think one of the busiest in record, going okay. back um, to 2007. Um, I think there have been over 60, 60 IPOs on the main market and okay. aim, collectively raising over £10 billion. Pounds. So um, we're, in, we're in a booming IPO market yeah. uh, and we haven't had that for many years and plenty of companies successfully coming to market. Um, I think reading some statistics, uh, the performance of over half of the companies that have come to market have performed you know, better than existing listed companies in terms of share price okay. performance. And I think on average, share prices are up. So there have been a few, there have been a few sort of, the press has latched onto a few um, companies where you know, in the aftermarket, the share price hasn't performed particularly well or yeah. uh, IPOs have been pulled. But in the round, um, it, it, it's good times for the IPO market. Okay. Um, we've seen plenty of retail companies coming to the market. We've seen uh, uh, banks IPO again, the yeah. likes of Lloyds, TSB, One Savings Bank, um, TMTs back in fashion with the likes of um, AO, Just Eat. So lots of successful companies. Yeah. Um, there has been a bit of press around um, uh, prices dipping, uh, companies pulling out of floats. But I think that's 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 usual for an IPO cycle. Yeah. Um, at the start, there's exuberance, there's lots of cash investors have got money to spend. Um, and, you know, valuations are, are punchy, but people sort of want to put their money somewhere. Yeah. Um, as, as IPOs have um, come through to the market and as uh, the months have gone by, I suspect investors are becoming a bit more cagey. Okay. Um, they've got less funds to invest. Yeah. Um, you know, with any market, there's a price for buyers and sellers and, um, you know, sellers obviously want to achieve the highest price, selling shareholders getting out of companies or listing companies yeah. want to, you know, get, get the best valuation and buyers want to, you know, get a good deal. Yeah. So um, we've certainly seen in some cases, some of the pooled IPOs, I suspect, you know, relate more to valuation and expectations around price than, okay. than fundamentals of business. Um, yeah. I think in terms of um, aftermarket share price performance in some cases where it has has dipped um, you know again um, uh, th you know that could be based around I investors sort of the liquidity of the stock yeah. um, investors who came into the IPO perhaps not wanting to hold on for too long so if you know if there's lots of stock coming onto the market immediately after IPO that has an impact on price um, but broadly I think um, when the market's strong yeah um, it's still very much open I mean we've come into a lull with the summer but yeah. I see the second half um, there's, there's good, there's the good companies in the pipeline. Certainly, we're seeing, and um, I, I think it's just a natural evolution of the IPO cycle. Okay. So, okay. Um, generally positive. I okay. Think. Good. Um, in our last talking point video, um, we discussed the new controlling shareholder provisions in the listing rules, and um, since then, we've seen the high-profile um, Quindle case, where yes. the FCA basically they advised the company they didn't meet the eligibility requirements. Um, for a premium listing, uh, citing that it was basically based on their fi historical financial information. Um, do you think the changes to the listing rules and that case are indications that the FCA has become tougher in its attitude towards companies seeking IPOs? It, it's interesting. I, cer I certainly think the FCA and the, reg the regulator uh, has become tougher. Yeah. Um, we've gone through several years of consultations around changes to the listing rules in light of, you know, sort of corporate governance failings yeah. at certain listed companies. Um, and so the, the, the FCA and the rule changes, you know, as you know, came into effect in May. So certainly there is greater scrutiny about compliance with listing rules, yeah. uh, enforcement actions where listed companies, you know, have 
been determined to have breached rules. Um, in terms of companies seeking IPOs and eligibility, I think Quindell, it's interesting you mentioned Quindell because it's probably, I hope, well, I think a bit of a one-off case in terms of the, the situation. I mean, Quindell uh, it was, a, was a company that started off as a broad-based IT company. It floated on AIM in 2011, I think. Yeah. It, it changed its business quite dramatically and became a uh, you know, motor insurance claims business okay. um, and had a you know, market cap of two billion, I think, yeah. almost within a very short space of time. Um, and, and in that period made 30 plus acquisitions. Oh, right. um, okay, yes. So, and I think the chairman or the CEO publicly stated that um, back earlier in the year, they were seeking, they were going to submit a prospectus to the UKLA and seek a, a, a move from the A market to the premium market. So they sort of um, made very clear what they were trying to do. And I suspect that was presumably before eligibility discussions had taken place. Um, and in relation to eligibility in the case of Quindell, um, you, you pointed out that the um, Quindell was determined not to be eligible because of its financial track record. And I think that the rule um, that the FCA pointed to in that case was is not a new rule. It's been yeah. there um, for premium listing companies from the outset of the um, uh, of the premium segment and actually the, the list, listing rule six, which broadly says that um, a, a company needs to be able to show for its three-year track record, um, needs to be able to show financial information for 75% of its business. Okay. Now, clearly a company that has made numerous acquisitions in a short space of time yeah. is going to struggle potentially to do that. Yeah. And, and the purpose there is that investors need to be able to, have a, be able to make an informed assessment of how the business that they're buying into now uh, uh, you, you know, looks over historical uh, looks over historical period, and I, I suspect Quindle struggled to be able to, to show that. Yeah. And I, I think that's that's the FCA performing its proper function. I, yeah. I would have thought there's other cases. Well, certain, there certainly are other cases where that the FCA has um, you know come to that determination yeah. in private. Um, and you know, obviously, the, the standard listing option is available as well yeah. for companies that can't meet that requirement. But I certainly think we are in a in a you know in times where the regulator is more focused on yeah. eligibility issues generally and and certainly enforcement for yeah. um, breaches of the listing rules. Okay, okay, great. So yeah, so in summary what we're saying is is that the FCA does appear to be taking an attitude that is tougher not only to companies seeking um, IPOs but also to the enforcement of listed of companies that are already listed. I think that's right. That yes. is right. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much Dan for your insight today um, and thank you very much for joining us. Um, and taking the time to join us on this Market Tracker Talking Point. Goodbye.